Do you feel like your partner was completely indifferent to your feelings, to your emotions, didn't care, didn't matter, and your feelings and needs, emotions, all those things didn't even take precedent in his life at all? I want to talk to you today about narcissists and the empathy void, like how narcissists will disregard your pain and it seems like they don't even care about it. It seems like it doesn't even matter to them. Hurt and abuse and keep moving on. It's like, eh, forget you. They just keep doing what they're going to do. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness about narcissistic abuse. I'm able to show up and tell you, hey, how I showed up consistently with no empathy at all. A lot of times people ask now, well, like, how do you feel? What looks, what, what does empathy look like for you now? And I'm like, there's a higher level, incredibly, of cognitive empathy for sure. There's not as much of an empathy piece of like, if you start crying, I'm not going to start crying or like, feel as bad in one sense innately, but I also know more based on everything that I've worked on. Now, is that changing? There's pieces of that. And it's taking a long time to even do that where I'm tapping into different feelings or emotions that I've never tapped into before. A lot of the work that I do inside the tools that I use with stacking and some of the ones that we've incorporated in the challenges and the therapy that I do has started to open up different doors for me. Now, that's a long, long process, like already going on three years at this point, but it's still a process that I'm committed to working through and continuing to go into. Today, what I do is I take the knowledge and the things that I've learned for myself and from the experiences that I've done, and I try to bring them to the table to help you break free from narcissistic abuse, whether that's officially like a trauma bond that we typically call it, or whether it's just the addictive piece of wanting to go back to a toxic person. If you want to know more about that, you can go to claritychallenge.net and actually see the process and the program that we do to help you actually break free from that toxicity. Because a lot of times you feel like your feelings and your needs don't matter. Well, the first thing that comes down to is this self-centered approach that the narcissist has. Like, I believe the world revolves around me. Like, that's the idea. That's the thought process. If they could say that, that's what they would say. The world revolves around me. You should revolve around me. You should serve me. You should bow down to me, basically, is the thought process, because I'm so amazing. Think of it this way. If you have someone where the entire world and planet revolves around them, then in their mind, it's like, well, it would make sense that people are supposed to serve me, supposed to give me what I want. The entitlement kind of comes out, all those different pieces, because narcissists are absorbed with their own needs, with their own desires. Now, it's own needs and own desires for themselves, and it's also like, how do I actually fix my emotions by belittling other people or by ignoring my emotions by ignoring other people's emotions? And so oftentimes you'll see this dismissiveness or a tendency to trivialize what you're feeling. And the emotional pain that comes from it like, is awful because you're like, this is something I'm feeling, and it's like, he doesn't even care. It doesn't even show any like positivity or any growth in that aspect of actually empathizing with you. So think of it like empathy involves this ability to understand and share another person's feelings. Narcissist seems to lack this piece, this crucial emotional trait. Now, it's not always that they can't even share it. Oftentimes, too, it's also the aspect that they don't want to share it. There's a difference. A lot of times people think like narcissists are devoid of empathy. They can't do this. They can't connect with anybody at all. And that's not always true. It especially wasn't true at the beginning of the relationship when he seemed loving and caring and affectionate. And there seemed like there was depth and emotional intelligence there. And then later it seemed like it was gone. It's not like he just lost it or had amnesia and all of a sudden forgot about how to do this. It's because he started to realize and he started to see, I no longer want to identify or even acknowledge your emotions because of what it reveals about inside me, what it reveals about the things that I don't want to feel that I don't want to do. I'll do a video about that on, that, that on later, so kind of give you an idea. Okay, but the whole aspect is like the world is going to revolve around me. My desire is to be on center stage, to look and act and be the best person ever. So like the narcissist is looking at like, okay, this is who I am. I'm going to be the center of the universe. I'm going to be the perfect person. I'm going to be the one that you like look up to, all those things. And it leaves little room for anyone else's needs, emotions, or anything else. Like everything else doesn't matter. Okay. So like when you have this one priority, this one goal, all the others don't matter. Now, the problem is for narcissists, that one priority and that one goal is themselves. Typically it's the mask. Like, this is who I am. This is who I want to portray to the world that I am. This is who I want to be so I don't have to feel shame or guilt or anything bad. And so as a result, you get down, downgraded. You get discarded. 
you get downplayed with your emotions and the frustrations and emotional duress that you're going on doesn't even matter anymore because it's all about him. Like this makes you start to revolve around him where you don't spend time with your kids. You don't spend time on yourself. You don't spend time with others. Like everything comes around this person, the narcissist. Makes you feel unseen because he doesn't see you. He doesn't care. Makes you feel unimportant because that's what he's demonstrating over and over and over again. Like you keep expressing concerns, frustrations. Maybe you're bringing up your different anxieties about, hey, this is what I'm struggling with in the relationship of how you talk to me, of how this comes up. And you try to bring up this piece of like a personal side and he comes across like he doesn't even care. Like he's just indifferent about it. Or typically what you'll see is like this annoyance of like, why are you bringing this up right now? Do I, I really don't have time to deal with this. You, can you, can you like not talk about this some other time? Like, I can't believe you're bringing this now, this up now. Like I have too much stuff to do. Then you feel like you're an inconvenience to the narcissist, the toxic person in your life. And this peace comes in, this lack of empathy leaves you at a place where you start to feel isolated, emotionally abandoned of like, well, if he doesn't care about me, like what's wrong with me? Maybe no one will care about me. And it starts to spiral off more and more. Now it gets to this place where the narcissist starts to toy with you starts to toy with your emotions, starts to move into emotional manipulation, where it starts to control you and uses your emotions, uses your feelings as tools, as a means to an end, to achieve an outcome, to achieve a certain objective. Like, this is what I want. What do I need to do to pivot, to modify, to make sure that you feel or experience so that I can get to the place of getting what I want? You see, not only do narcissists lack empathy, but they also are skilled at using your emotions, using your empathy against you. This is why it's so difficult when people are like, how do I help my narcissist? And I'm like, you can't because it can't be from you. Maybe it could be from someone else, but it can't be from you because if it's from you, the narcissist will play the victim and you will be the savior in the moment so that they keep getting supply. They keep getting your attention. They keep getting you stuck in the relationship. Narcissists oftentimes will use that as a tool, as a, as a vulnerable point in your life of like, you are going to give empathy. I'm going to use that. I'm going to suck all that up so that I feel better about myself of you doting on me, but it's not really going to cause me to change. You see this with your vulnerabilities and with the things that are happening where narcissists will try to figure out what they are and exploit them to gain control over you, exploit them to make sure they are in charge. Maybe it's like he'll, he'll pretend to be uh, have affection. He'll pretend to have concern when only when it suits the agenda of the narcissist. So like when I needed something, then it was time to show affection. Then it was time to show care. When I, when I knew if I do this, I'm going to get what I want. If I do this, I'm going to avoid her holding me accountable. If I do this, I'm going to get to the place where I can go do what I want with who I want, et cetera, because this emotional bucket of hers will be filled and it'll give me X amount of time. So like you'll see different things where narcissists will try to manipulate you emotionally knowing that what they need to do is do a certain couple of things to get what they want. And this just puts you down the roller coaster. Makes it even harder because you start to experience this more and more and more and it starts to get more confusing. Like does he actually care? Does he not care? And it goes back and forth. So he might be at the place where he's giving you affection or love. Okay. Where he wants something from you or he wants to avoid something you're holding him accountable for. And it's hard because it seems genuine. It seems like he's actually caring. It seems like the, the switch flipped and now he's Mr. Nice Guy instead of the awful guy. But as soon as the needs are met, as soon as he gets what he wants, disappears, withdraws, silent treatment, leaves you bewildered, leaves you questioning, leaves you confused and emotionally drained. This is the hard part of the piece of empathy of where they lack it. So as a result, it's like, let me do whatever I want to do to you. The other piece with the, the empathy void that I want to bring up is this idea of invalidating your feelings. It's not just ignoring them and it's not just moving past them. It's more of dismissing them, making sure that you know that your pain is not that big of a deal. Sometimes he might even say that. Like, why are you upset? You don't have it that bad. People have it a lot worse than you. Why are you upset about it? I've seen and I've talked to many different people that they start to say that on calls. They're like, well, I mean, I know my, I know you've probably heard this before. I know like this has probably been the same abuse that other people have had. I know my situation is probably not as bad as others. And like, I have to stop him and kind of like reframe it for a minute. Cause I'm like, is that what he told you? 
Like, is that how it comes across? Because the narcissist started to minimize and invalidate the feelings that you had, belittling your emotions, your experiences, and making you question if you're even in touch with your own feelings. Like, this will happen so much that you'll get used to explaining away your experiences. You'll start to minimize the things that have happened. You'll start to even defend the narcissist, thinking like, well, it wasn't all his fault. I contributed. I had I had blame. Totally get that. But we're not talking about fault. We're talking about evidence. And we're talking about abuse. There's a big difference there. So you have to understand a narcissist will invalidate your feelings. Like you start to express hurt, dissatisfaction, frustration, and he might mock you, he might put you down. He might like tell you that you're overreacting, that you're oversensitive, that you're making a mountain out of a molehill, big deal out of nothing. Like trying to accuse you of overreacting, blaming you for even causing the problem to start off with. Like we wouldn't have this. You wouldn't be in this spot if you weren't doing this. It's your fault. Trying to make you feel like you're the one that's crazy. You're the one that's actually doing this. And this const- this consistency of invalidating over and over and over starts to erode away at your self-esteem, starts to make you doubt your current reality. Think of it this way. Like you have a situation where you confront him about something he did that was hurtful. Like he talked to you in a certain way, he yelled at you, but instead of him even acknowledging that you're hurting, it's like, you're still on that? Like, I thought we already moved past this. I already said I was sorry. Why can't you get over it? Suggesting a lot of times that you're overly sensitive, that it's a bigger deal when it's not. This constant invalidation starts to chip away at you, at your self-worth, your self-esteem, your confidence. It's time for you to reclaim that. It's time for you to move forward in your healing and to understand that this piece of the lack of empathy will continue to keep you stuck trying to get more empathy, trying to get more care from this person when he doesn't care. And what you're seeing is him invalidate, him dismiss, him minimize all the things that you're experiencing. And you need to understand that until we actually are able to validate those things that they actually happen, they're actually real, and to help you change the story you believe, to stop believing his narrative, you will still stay stuck. If you want to be free, please reach out for help. Go to claritychallenge.net to be able to sign up today of how we break people free every single day.